Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to take a look at Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. Here I have the Galaxy Nexus. You may have seen my unboxing the other day, and I've been using it for a few days and wanted to do a thorough overview of what's actually new in Ice Cream Sandwich as opposed to Android 2.5 and 3.0 on the tablet. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And on the home screen, you can see it's it looks a little bit different. The UI has been refined. They actually created a specific font for Android called Roboto, I believe is the full name of it, and it adds this kind of robotic or really nice clean text look to the phone itself, and you see that throughout on the keyboard and everything else. On the lock screen, we have this lock here in the middle, and I don't know if you can see this light ring here. I can bring the, the icon up here and unlock the phone, as you see there. If I lock it, go back. I can hold and go straight to the camera, or if I get a notification, I can pull down and read the notification. I can simply tap on it. I don't have any right here, but it will show an email, for example. Tap on it, it will go right to the email instead of unlocking. It knows that you're interacting with the phone and brings you to the next menu. So let's go ahead and unlock it. And here we have the home screen. Now I've added a few things like Twitter and Netflix to the home screen, along with Listen and Pulse. But by default, we have a little folder here. Similar to iOS, uh, you can actually group the icons into folders. So if I take Netflix, hold down onto it, I have the option to remove up here. Or if I dra it, drag it over Pulse, I can drop it in. Now I have a folder I tap on, and both options are there. Just as easily, I can pull this out of the folder, and we'll go back. And I can move them around just by simply holding and moving. Now here you can see I have a default folder with quite a few things in it. Spotify, music, etc. Let's go back here. And we have our home screens like you would expect. So let's slide to the left and right. You can see I've added some things. There isn't a whole lot going on here, but you get the idea. We have our typical home screens on Android. But the folders are nice. I can also move these folders down into the bottom, uh, or actually are my icons down into the bottom, and create folders here as well. I can drag these out, drag these in, and there you go. So you can put these wherever you want. Now one thing, I don't know if you can tell on this phone. Let me go ahead and drag Pulse out of here and move it around. You can see how simple and fluid the whole UI is. Everything kind of moves more smoothly, as whereas opposed to before, it kind of snapped into place. It just looks a lot more clean and refined. So down here, you can see I have home back and I have a multitasking app switcher. So these buttons are actually on the screen, not on the phone. If I hit this, you can see it goes into multitasking, and these are the most recent apps. I can slide these off the screen and get rid of the ones I'm not going to use anytime soon. Uh, initially, per the Google Keynote, they had said that this actually closes the app. Upon further investigation, it looks as though it just suspends it, thanks to one of the readers here, or viewers rather. Uh, it looks like it just suspends it. The Verge did a little bit of video uh, investigation after, after the Keynote and found out that it really suspends it and doesn't actually close it. But the idea behind Ice Cream Sandwich is that it kind of manages the apps for you. So you really don't need an app killer like a lot of the other applications have or the other OS uses. You can see I'm just swiping them off the screen. Really nice and easy to switch. Aside from the new home screen folders, we now have resizable widgets. If I go over to a widget here, now this probably won't help, but let me drag the Twitter widget across into another view. There we go. Uh, let's see if this one will allow us to resize it. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But depending on what the widget is, sometimes you can actually have resizable widgets and you have the ability to do that. Uh, they, they've added that to the home screen, similar to Honeycomb as well. One of the things I can't really show you right now is some quick responses for incoming phone calls. There's some different options where you can kind of ignore the phone call and quickly text that person when the phone call comes in and it appears on the lock screen and you can do that. You can also swipe to dismiss notifications. If I get an email during this video, I'll go ahead and do that. We can just swipe it off the screen and you're good to go. There's a lot of different things they've done with text and input and spell checking that's really quite nice. So let me go ahead and open messaging. Uh, I'll make a new message and I won't pick who it's to yet if I can help it here. We'll go down and type the message. Now you can see the keyboard looks really nice. It's really uh, 
quite different and, and very quick to respond on this phone. So let me go ahead and say, just to make it simple, how are you today? So you can see it's today, and then it gives a suggestion down here. I can tap, just like before, but it seems to do a better job at it. Now, one of the things that Android has been pretty much first to market with, or at least done really well, is the voice to text. And it does it in real time with this. I'm on my Wi-Fi connection and not on, on 3G or 4G. Although I have to tell you, 4G is so fast when you're in a good coverage area that the speech to text is, is, is incredible. So let me go ahead and see how well this works. Hi, how are you today? Period. I hope we can go to the mall today and go shopping at the Apple store. Period. Okay, so you can see how well that works. You actually have time to think about what you want to say and allow it to input that text. Now, I know the Apple store is probably not what people wanting to see Android want to hear, but it was the first thing that comes to mind because it's really the only reason I would go to the mall other than maybe a movie. So I'll go ahead and cancel that. The texting seems to be much better in Android 4.0. It just is really quick to pick up on, on errors and it auto corrects very well. And previously to this, my favorite keyboard because of the auto correct and everything was actually on Windows Phone 7, uh, 7.5 Mango. Uh, I've used an iPhone, I've used all these phones with reviewing them, and my favorite keyboard was on Mango. This one is just as good and really fast, great at auto correction, and is, is a much needed improvement. Although it did an okay job before, uh, if you use an, an Android 4.0 device, you'll see how much better it really is. The voice input, as you saw, was fantastic. It works well all throughout the whole OS and is just one of those things that keeps getting better and better and is more and more innovative. Unfortunately, you can't talk to it similar to something like Siri yet, but I would assume that that would be coming down the road at some point as Google kind of pioneered the, the voice to text in phones, at least uh, with, with the original Androids and things. They've been great throughout and I know that's a key feature for a lot of people. So one of the things they've done with all of these CAP data plans is include a way to easily control your network data plans. So let's go ahead and go to settings. And here we have data usage. So let's go ahead and go into data usage. And you can set CAPs to warn you or to shut off different types of data. So as you can see, there's mobile data. It says on. We can set a limit. If we tap this, it says yes. We know we want to set a limit. Uh, we can adjust this where we want the limit. I actually don't want a limit, but we can set that really nice. We can let it, you know, alert us when we hit two megabytes, two gigabytes, whatever you want. You can have it alert you. If I scroll down here, you can see what's taking up the most amount of data. Pulse is a news reader for those who aren't familiar. It's a great one, by the way, if you haven't tried it. Uh, I've used it for a while on different devices. It just seems to do a great job. So you can see it's used 26.92 megabytes. There we have the market below and so on and so forth, all the way down to the last app. Music, 26.32 kilobytes, and media, 156 bytes. So it even shows you down to the byte level, so you can see what everything's using and how it's using it. Really nice feature that's added in Ice Cream Sandwich, and is great for those of us that have to worry about a data cap. As far as people go in this, they've kind of changed some of the people profiles. We'll go into the people area here and there you can see there's me if I go into my my own name here there's a couple of my email addresses and my picture from Facebook is where that's pulling from and it's also on uh, Google Plus actually is where that's pulling from so you can see there's a couple different options view my Google profile and they've made this just a little bit nicer it mine is repeated with syncing between so many different phones and things it gets messed up it needs to be corrected but that's why you're seeing duplicates uh, just as before, you can drag up and down, and everything is just super fast. The con contact information uh, has its, has your own me profile. You also have buddies and coworkers and all these things you can see and assign. It's just a much better way of viewing all of your different data about who people are and who you contact the most, things like that. It's really quite nice. 
they've changed some things in the calendar as well. So let's go back here. We'll go home. Now, I don't use calendar too awful much unless I have an important meeting or something. Uh, but let's see if I can even find it. There it is. So here you can see calendar. And they've changed the way it looks a little bit and functions. They've tried to make it a little bit easier uh, to manage your, your life as far as calendars go. So here you can see a Red Cross donation. Um, I don't know if that's in a couple days or not. Yeah, I guess that's in a couple days. Uh, work, church, things like that. Uh, they're just all assigned in here. They look nice. If I want to go to the Red Cross donation, it says when it is. It's, it's pretty nice. It's just an overall, just a different style UI on that. They've also added visual voice ma uh, voicemail, just like an iPhone, uh, and a lot of the things that really should be on any phone nowadays. Visual voicemail is just super helpful, a lot easier than dialing a number, listening to your messages. It just shows you your message. And this one will actually, like Google Voice, uh, try to present you with text messages or text that tells you what your message is, as opposed to having to listen to it, which is always a nice feature, especially when you can't listen to it and you're in a meeting or wherever you are, in school even. Now, one of the things they've changed quite a bit is the camera UI. So let's go ahead and go into camera. And there we go. And the default camera on this, this uh, camera, I believe, is 5 megapixels, if I remember properly. Uh, it's a great camera, though. And you can see there's white behind it. Let me slide the, the Droid Razor into view so we have something behind it. So there's the Razor behind it. We have the zoom option here. We can spin the camera around uh, to the forward-facing camera. We also have some edit modes in here. We'll look at these in a moment. We have video recording. We can just bring this up, switch to video. We also have panorama mode. It will make a panorama for you. And all of this works pretty well. Let's go ahead and try the panorama. Off to my left, I have the iPad with some notes and things. Uh, there's some light you can see. So let's go ahead and you can... We'll bring the panorama around. You can see the bar at the bottom is what's showing you how far you are with the panorama, telling me to slow down. It's kind of hard to do this. Okay, let's see if it will. So it kind of took what I was looking at and displayed it all out, but it's a little bit confusing. But we'll cancel it for now. But you get the idea. It works really well. There have been apps that are similar to it before, uh, but it does a great job. As you saw here, I hit the back button, and what it did is it gave me a bunch of options of what I can do. This is actually uh, an old floor I took a picture of, and here you can see there's Bluetooth for sharing, Picasa, uh, text messaging or SMS or MMS, Google+, email, uh, Gmail, Facebook, and Twitter. I can share it across any of these platforms. And one of the things I didn't mention is across these platforms, I'm consistently logged in. If I'm in Gmail or logged into Gmail, it actually remembers that I'm logged into Gmail. So when I go into the next application and it asks me what account I want to use, I can just select Gmail and it works fine. So we'll take a look at some of the applications as far as pictures go. We can share, as you saw here, but we can also edit in the gallery. The gallery looks a little bit different. Uh, let's go ahead and here's our sharing options. You can see all that. Uh, let's go into this edit, this one. We can tap, again, a picture of a floor. And one of the things they've done on Android to kind of unify it is this little three dots. Anytime you see three dots, you have more options. Let's go ahead and tap that. And we have a slideshow. We can edit, rotate, crop, details, set picture as. So let's go into edit. And there we go. Now let's do effects. Uh, we'll posterize or posterize. No, and there we're back. So you kind of get the idea. You can edit your photos. These are all built in. That doesn't stop you from using other apps, but that's one of the features built in. Let's go into the art one. We'll do sepia tone. So you get the idea. It's all built in, nice features, and it seems to work much better than previous apps. We also have something similar uh, to things you may see on Windows or Mac when you uh, use the forward-facing camera which will give you different effects on your face and things like that. 
They've also included Face Unlock on the Android 4.0 platform. Face Unlock isn't something I really uh, want to use regularly and seemed to be a little bit of a problem in their keynote even. It wasn't 100%, but it's a neat idea. The phone actually recognizes you and will unlock based on what it sees through the camera. One of the things we want to take a look at that they've changed is the browser. If we go into the browser, here you can see I have Zolo Tech up and we can pinch to zoom like you would expect but if we go here on every single page like I mentioned before you hit these three dots and we will have different options so we have a bunch of different options to share the page or find something on the page we can also request desktop site so instead of by default lo loading the mobile site you can actually load the desktop site every time and that's adjustable per tab that you're in as well so here we have all of these different settings there's also save for offline reading but we have a bunch of different settings like you would expect even bandwidth management for the app itself we can tell it not to load the images just to help save us with data so it's pretty nice they've upgraded that let's go back to home here and as you may see now I have a couple different emails on the top and we can see those from the lock screen now like I mentioned if we go here slide down on the lock screen you can see someone commented on a YouTube video and then there's someone talking about a cloud expo if I don't want to read those right now I can slide one off the screen or just as I could in the lock screen I could pull down go here and it will load the email very nice convenient and works really well other than that uh, Google has actually added NFC or near field communications for paying your bills or paying with a credit card by using your phone at any place that al allows the tap to pay with a credit card you can use this although Google Wallet is not yet available for this device uh, without any rooting hopefully it'll be available soon officially anyway they've also included some updates as far as Wi-Fi sharing Bluetooth sharing tap to share so if you have two Google Nexuses you want to share music or files or just about anything app wise you can just tap the other one and it will share the other thing that's changed is the app drawer the app drawer here you can see has your apps I can slide and sliding you can just keep going through widgets but the major thing that they've changed other than the animation is here we have a Disney princess that my daughter wanted to try if I hold this I can move it to the home screen but I also have the option to go to app info or I can go to uninstall so I can just simply uninstall from this screen it'll pop up ask me do I want to uninstall it so it makes it much easier to get rid of the applications that you no longer want to have on your phone so really nice very convenient and really very 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 good update to this operating system if there's anything you would like to see that I haven't shown or that you think is significant that I may have missed please go ahead and place those in the comments below as always if you haven't subscribed please go ahead and subscribe this is Aaron thanks for watching I'll see you next time